All right, hey, what's going on, folks? Uh, Earthmaster here, checking in straight up 8 o'clock right now, Pacific time here in California. And uh, it is the 16th of July, 2019, and still got the uh, tremendous amount of earthquake activity occurring down there in the uh, southern part of the state of California. Uh, this here is the most recent earthquakes in California and Nevada map. From the Caltech website and uh, definitely showing quite a bit of activity down there near the Ridgecrest area with a um, most recent 4.4 magnitude earthquake strike in the region uh, that followed up by um, some more activity. I think we'll go ahead and cover that first before we get into the activity up around the San Francisco Bay area. You can see a couple red, uh, blue squares in that region where they had a 4.4 and a 3.5 and some smaller after aftershocks earlier today so we'll go ahead and get into the uh, southern part of the state here real quick and uh, show you guys what's going on and the uh, current activity that's taking place there uh, zooming in here at least on this map over the last week of course earthquake activity has dropped down off of the map I should say uh, tremendously because well we're past the uh, 6.4 and 7.1 magnitude dates so it's been over a week so it's not going to show all the uh, thousands of earthquakes that took place following those two large magnitudes down there by the Ridgecrest area but needless to say 7,717 earthquakes on this specific map over the last week in the Ridgecrest area um, and of course most importantly uh, recent earthquake activity you can see uh, down the list here we had kind of a an uptick in activity over the last hour with a 4.4 uh, 3.2 and a 3.3 and of course a bunch of twos in between there and of course this activity this most recent activity is kind of shooting up towards the north once again there we did see it calm down a little bit but uh, we're starting to see some heavier activity up towards the north north of the uh, uh, epicenters of the 6.4 and the 7.1 that took place last week um, we've talked about a little bit about this migration that's been taking place towards the north and also if you look down towards the south a little bit southwest of the swarm of the of the earthquakes there you can see a little bit of a uh, older activity yellow squares and a couple blue ones there kind of towards the Tehachapi area or at least halfway in between Tehachapi and the uh, the big cluster of quakes there uh, we talked about that fault system there on a couple updated videos uh, over the past couple days and that activity itself has kind of calmed down at least in that area and on that specific fault zone but uh, like I say the activity has picked up today in the north part of this swarm and um, we'll keep an eye on it see how much further it uh, wants to advance towards the Lone Pine area um, the Wells Owens what is it the Owens fault system up there I believe it is um, I did an update video on that here a few days ago uh, and, and potential for large earthquakes on that specific fault there near Lone Pine um, so kind of creeping up that way. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that activity there um, tonight. I mean, we could just be starting to see a, um, a sequence of quakes tonight that may lead to something bigger. I don't know. Um, all I know is we're definitely seeing an uptick in activity over the last hour or so of uh, some fairly moderate quakes here. Let me see if I can go down the list a little bit more, at least on my side. Well... We'll just have to go with that for right now. We don't need to go too far back. Just uh, more importantly, the uh, moderate quakes are kind of taking place right now um, in that area. And once again, north of the of the uh, activity occurring, or north of the acti uh, epicenter is what I'm trying to say there. Uh, just trying to figure out why this uh, certain map is not working. Um, so yeah. I mean, it's uh, just one big, huge cluster of quakes down there, folks. I mean, it's still ongoing. Um, I don't think it's really calmed down all that much. Uh, just the number, like I mentioned, the numbers dropped because of the uh, the 
the time frame that this map displays, you know, only last week, within the last week, seven days from today. Of course, the red square is indicating within the last hour and the blue within the last day. So obviously a good amount of activity there. Um, I want to show you guys something here real quick. See if I can bring it, bring up this other one here. It's just been a long, fun day once again. Uh, wow, that's a little bit on the on the uh, big side there. Let me see if I can fix that here real quick. Well, that's not really what I wanted, but we'll go with it anyway. So here's another map from the USGS here, just showing 2.5 and above. Um, so a lot of the earthquakes are absent, of course. Anything below 2.5 is obviously not going to show up here on this map. Uh, is this right? Let me uh, make sure this is updated here. Go ahead and refresh this page just to make sure. And yeah, okay, so we're... Looking at the most recent, one day, magnitude 2.5 and above, uh, looks like, you know, some activity. There's a 4.4 once again, uh, 10 kilometers northeast of Coso Junction. Uh, some folks reported feeling that earthquake, no doubt. Let's see here, and I can kind of go down here to the list and look at some of the other uh, magnitudes here. There was, looks like there was a 4.5 there, a little bit closer to the epicenter. Um, earlier, looks like possibly maybe yesterday or late last night. Let's see here. No, no yeah, it was sometime today. Uh, a few hours ago, though. And then, uh, yeah, just quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of twos and and uh, whatnot. Like I said, it just seems as though the activity has definitely ramped up here today, and uh, more importantly, within the last hour. Um, let's take a gander up here towards the uh, north part of Northern California, and you guys can see. Um, let me get that within view there. There you go. Just a couple small quakes there, um, but. Of a kind of an area to watch around the Bay Area. I know there. Uh, uh, I think their prob probability of earthquakes, of a large earthquake, is a little bit less, at least the percentage-wise, uh, a little bit less than the southern part of the uh, state. Uh, definitely a, a more higher probability of seeing a large earthquake towards the south. But um, you know, this is coming from folks, the USGS folks, and, and the scientists and geologists and whatnot, so, you know, Mother Nature can throw a wrench in the, uh, in the plans there, and, uh, you know, who knows, she might create a big one, uh, tonight, hopefully not, but 4.3 and a 3.2, looks like they dropped that down, it was originally a 4.4, uh, earthquake there. Kind of within the region. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more here. Show you guys. Oh yeah, I don't. It doesn't look like my faults are on real quick. I kind of wanted to show you guys exactly where the earthquakes took place here, the uh, specific fault section. Um, 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 um. U.S. faults, plate boundaries, okay, shows that it's on, but I am not seeing it. Not for sure why, folks. Um, it does show certain faults over here. If you move over here towards the west, you can see the San Andreas fault, but I'm not seeing the uh, this specific fault system that it took place on. Uh, but I did save some information here on that fault. Hold on a second here. It's called the uh, Greenville Fault System. And 
I don't know, it's kind of weird. Stuff starts happening to my computer when I start talking about stuff like this. Not for sure. Faults drop off the map. Um, I see other faults up by Concord. I think I see the Hayward fault over here. Uh, a little bit further west uh, and south towards the Hayward area. But I'm not seeing this specific fault that I uh, just looked up. Okay, well, it shows it here at least, but on another map that I was just looking at, it actually showed it further north, north of that interstate that's there by the uh, uh, that white flag there that's talking about which fault system that is. It actually showed the fault system running up towards the earthquakes there, but I don't know. I'll, I'll let that pass, but I know for sure I've seen it. I just checked, but that's on the Greenville Fault and it extends further than what it's showing on this map here. I don't know why it's like that. Anyway, um, the Greenville Fault is a, uh, yeah, it's not really, it's not really way up there on, um, let's see, I'm trying to get rid of a couple things here. It just, oh yeah, it's been a fun day, let me tell you. I always say that, don't I? One of these days, I'm going to get on here and say, you know what, today's been a great day. And I won't be, I won't be, uh, I won't be just saying that. I have a feeling uh, good days are coming up here, so. Anyway, folks, just a little bit of information on the Clayton Marsh Creek Greenville Fault. That's where these earthquakes took place. Not a whole lot of activity um, to report, at least in the past, on this fault system here. Um, it does talk about a 5.8 that took place back in 1980 uh, called the Livermore Earthquake. Uh, occurred on this specific fault system. Uh, the fault creeps at a rate of 2 mm per year which is very minor uh, the predicted probability of a major earthquake on this fault within the next 30 years is relatively low at only three percent uh, of course compared compared to nearby faults such as the Hayward fault which is a it's a fault system with a, a lot higher probability of having a major earthquake um, pretty soon so kind of interesting I mean uh, you know it's it's possible that there could be a larger earthquake on here obviously a 5.8 took place back in 1980 but depending on how much stress has been built up since then um, you kind of have to throw that into the uh, equation as well this here is just a little map that uh, the folks popped up there Let me get that within view I think you guys can read that. At least I can read it here on my side. If not, I'll go ahead and read it anyway. Um, talks a little bit about the percentages around the Bay Area and the specific fault systems that uh, have a probability of seeing a 6.7 or greater earthquake uh, from 2000... What is that? 2003? So this might be a little bit older. At least this is from Wikipedia. Anyway, uh, to 2032... Um, this result incorporates 14% odds of quakes not on the shown faults. Okay, so anyway, pretty low throughout the Bay Area if you look at it. Um, even the Hayward Fault uh, that they talk about, 27 looks like 27% there. Uh, I think that has actually gone up a little bit higher. So uh, this might be a little bit outdated information that's stored up here on the Wikipedia page, but. Uh, Still interesting to look at nonetheless here. Look at the probabilities. Look at San Francisco on the San Andreas fault system. Pretty high, at least fairly high probability of seeing a 6.7 again. Of course, you know, 1906, uh, history will ultimately repeat itself again, right? Um, but of course, now there, there's a huge, huge, huge city um, in that area, you know, and it's uh, going to be most devastating if something big happens on that uh, in that region. But, uh, hold on a second here. 
Oh yeah, this here they just put out, the USGS folks did, on the 2019 earthquake sequence of the uh, M6.4 and 7.1 that took place near the Ridgecrest area. Uh, of course the Independence Day, it'll go down probably as the Independence Day earthquake, at least 6.4, and then the day later we see that 7.1. Um, looks like there was 51,000 responses via Did You Fill It uh, reports there from the USGS on the 6.4. 42 plus, 42,000 uh, did the responses via Did You Fill It on the 7.1. So kind of odd there. Less people felt it or at least less people reported it uh, with the big one there. Pretty interesting. Uh, 631 earthquakes me uh, measuring magnitude 3, three plus. Uh, at least strong enough to be felt. Um, five M5 earthquakes so far uh, large enough to do damage. Aftershock forecast, uh, chance of an earthquake uh, updated or at least within the next week until July 22nd, uh, 2019. It looks like, of course, obviously an M3 plus is 99%. We already seen that today within the last hour of that 4.4. Uh, M5, which is possible we may see, is only at about 30%. Uh, 0 to 3 such earthquakes may occur. Magnitude 6 plus is only at 4%. Uh, such an earthquake is possible, but with low probability. You know, it's just, I don't know. You know, these, these folks, uh, they do a lot of studying, they do a lot of uh, uh, digging around, looking at history and, and reading the, the ground and the faults, you know, it's, we're still learning stuff, you know, we're still uh, discovering how, you know, certain faults may affect other faults and, and whatnot, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's possible that we could see odds in our favor, or maybe not necessarily a good thing in our favor. Of, of seeing possibly a, a six or so earthquake um, and I've talked about this before if we continue to see uh, the northward migration of these quakes there towards the Owens fault system or Owens fault zone where a uh, uh, 18, 1872 quake took place it was a seven point uh, I can't remember exactly what it was but I discussed it in, in my past uh, update videos. I think I may have even did a specific update video in regards to the uh, Owens, fault <coughs> Owens fault system there. So um, check that out if you want. Uh, M7 plus magnitude is well 1%. Well 1 in 300 chance anyway. Uh, such an earthquake is possible but, but with low probability. So We'll see what happens, folks. Um, the chances are out there, you know, and it, it, Mother Nature may just say, you know what, let's uh, let's show these folks that uh, they can't uh, always be correct. You know, it's it's uh, it's probable that we may see something. I mean, it just seems as though we're seeing a lot of pressure out here along the west coast uh, really no movement or at least no quakes on the northern part of the San Andreas fault system I think we see a little small creeping uh, or small earthquakes along the creeping section but nothing nothing really major nothing nothing even moderate on the San Andreas fault but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we're not going to see something happen, you know. It's just best be prepared out there. Always be prepared, I think, uh, is the key. Uh, living out here in California myself, I mean, we're kind of north of uh, north of the Bay Area by about a hundred miles or so. So we're somewhat away from that region, but still within earthquake country. So it's kind of kind of a a big deal for us too, at least where I live but not as much as uh, you know the folks that live down in the Bay Area and of course down in Southern California uh, where the chances of a larger 
quake are way way higher than up here in the north uh, checking out worldwide earthquakes real quick folks uh, last looks like the last 24 hours of uh, earthquake activity 2.5 and above that 6.2 older earthquake activity just getting ready to drop off the globe seeing some new quakes up along the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire 5.6 4.8 and 6.6 .6 in the line headed up towards the Japan area um, or is deep earthquake activity we're seeing a little bit it looks like an older one that 4.5 right there just south of the Fiji Islands region or right around there actually um, so yeah definitely uh, activity still on the uh, still on the go but not as active as we've seen um, a couple days ago so might, something might be brewing out here it looks like to seeing you know kind of like that sequence of uh, earthquakes up here in the line um, so we might want to take a or keep a close eye up here off the coast of uh, Japan kind of towards the northeast up here northeast of that 4.6 we could see something uh, uh, being triggered up there in the larger magnitude uh, area so other than that um, the earth is doing what it's doing right plate tectonics at work here uh, 2.7 the latest earthquake down there in the Southern California region Ridgecrest area and I think we've seen that show up on that graph right there um, right now that being this one right here uh, station to the uh, just above this one is in Mammoth Lakes California um, near Long Valley Super Volcano and then the station below that here is the uh, pretty good station to watch I'm pretty sure that uh, that 4.3, 4.4 that struck around the Bay Area showed up pretty nicely on that one. Uh, I did not see it. Uh, I had to go uh, pay my taxes and all that good stuff. Uh, but it would have been pretty cool to see. Uh, so anyway, folks, going to cut this thing a little bit short. It's been a long, fun day. Uh, I need a little bit of rest and um, got to go back at it tomorrow super early. So really early probably in like I don't know what time is it I'm going to bed here pretty soon I sound like an old man but I tell you what it's it's been a long hot day temperatures up in the hundreds here all week not happy about it one bit so anyway I'm gonna stop complaining folks um, come on over to the live stream if you are watching this update video I do have a current view of the Tehachapi California region uh, at the train depot station railroad museum there pretty cool to watch some trains move in, trains move in and uh, watch watch the people walk around in, at night kind of interesting there or maybe a little creepy uh, how, however you want to look at it but still interesting nonetheless so anyway folks uh, appreciate it and uh, watch it at, at you guys a little bit later stay safe out there